In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can use if else statement in order to branch in our program. On the basis of some condition, we may need to take some action if the condition is true. Otherwise, we may need to take some other action. Such thing can be implemented using the if else statements. The conception remains same in all programming languages and in most of the programming languages, you will find the same keyword if and else for doing this kind of activities known as branching activities. Now the syntax is pretty simple. What we do, we use the if statement with a condition that we need to test and it is provided within the first bracket and the condition is generally formed using the logical operator as well as the relational operators. And if the condition is true, that means if the evaluation of the condition returns one, then whatever we write within the curly braces here, this is known as if block that is executed. Otherwise, if the condition is false, then whatever we write within the else block, that means the curly braces under this else that is executed. So if the condition is true, so a thing is pretty simple. If this condition is true, then the if block is executed for true condition. If the result of the condition is false, then the control goes to the else block and that is executed. Let me give you one example to understand this in much simpler way. Let me give you a simple example in order to demonstrate how the if and else keyword works. Here we have two variables a and b and another one max. We need to find out the maximum of a and b and want to store it in max. So what we need to do is to test the condition a greater than b and if a greater than b is true then obviously the maximum is true so we should execute this code otherwise else if this condition is false then the maximum is b so we should write this particular code here now you can go through the code manually that means we can try run this code in order to understand this say a is 30 and b is 20 in that case 30 greater than 20 is true this particular evaluation returns 1 and if e and if the result of the condition is true then whatever we have written here under the if block is going to be executed that means this particular code is going to be executed so max is assigned with a therefore max is 30 and it doesn't go to the else part at all so it comes here and whatever we write here that is executed. That means if we write here something like this, say printf maximum is percent %d max, so it's going to print the value for max that is 30. Otherwise, let us consider that we have a equals to 10 and b equals to 20. In that case, 10 greater than 20, this is false. This returns 0. So now in this case, since the condition is false, so the control comes directly to the else part that means the block under if is not executed in this case whatever we have written here under the else block is executed that means max is assigned with b in this case so 20 is assigned in b and here now printf prints 20 in this case this particular programming example finds out the maximum of two numbers given from the keyboard using if else statement you can see that we have used the scanf to take the first number here and scanf assigns the first number to variable a then here we are asking for the second number using this printf and the second number is taken by the scanf and assigned to the variable b now we are using the if else statement in order to find out the maximum here the condition is a greater than b and if that is true this particular section is executed within the if block so max is assigned with the value of a otherwise if a greater than b is false then the else part is executed instead of if block. So the else block assigns the content of B to the max variable. After doing this logical evolution, here the printf statement is printing the content of max. So ultimately the maximum of two numbers is printed into the console. So let me just execute the program to show you the result. Here it is asking for the first number. I'm giving 34. It is asking for the second number. I'm giving 90. So the maximum is 90, it is working fine. It is asking for the first number, I am giving minus 9. It is asking for the second number, I am giving minus 8. Minus 8 is greater than minus 9, so the maximum is minus 8. Again, I am executing the program once more. So I am giving 0 for the first number and 89 for the second number. So the maximum is 89. 
Now let me just write another program to demonstrate the conception of if and else that will make the thing much more easier for you to understand. In this program, we try to find out whether a given age is teenage or not. The user is supposed to input the age through the scanf statement and the age is going to be processed by the program. If the age is teenage, that means if the age is greater than or equals to 13 and less than or equals to 19, then the program is going to print, yes, this is teenage. Otherwise, it's going to print, no, this is not teenage. So, we need to take the age from the keyboard. So, I need age variable. So, I'm declaring a, an integer variable as age. And I am asking the user to input the age. Enter your age. It is going to be printed into the console. Then, I'm just scanning the value from the keyboard using the scanf function and I'm taking the value to the age variable using ampersand age. Now we need to process the age using the if else statement if the age is greater than or equals to 13 and this is the logical and. If you don't know how the logical and works you can go through the lecture that tells everything about logical operators in this tutorial that I have given earlier in section 1. So if the age is less than or equals to 19, then the program should print, yep, you are a teenager. Otherwise, if the condition fails, that means if the age is not in the range 13 to 19, say if the user has given 25 then obviously this is going to be true but this is going to be false so the and is false in that case the control comes to the else part and here we are printing no you are not a teen ager that's it we can execute the program and can see how it works so I'm executing the program now. So I'm giving the age, so I'm giving 15. So it is printing you, that's correct, you were teenager. Again, I'm giving something like this 90. No, you are not a teenager. So the program works fine. Actually, when we are giving an age that is between 13 and 19, both of these conditions are becoming true. That means say we are giving 15. In that case, 15 greater than is equal to 13, that is true. That means 1. Again, 15 less than equals to 19. That also is true. So, and is getting true on both the sides. And that is making the and true. So, the if is true. So, if is executing this portion. That means the age is teenage. So, it is printing that it's teenage. Otherwise, it is branching to the other section. If either of these condition is false, then the whole and is false. In that case, it is going to this branch, the else branch. And it is printing that no, you are not a teenage. Just as a note, please remember that if you have only one statement under if or else block, then you can omit the curly braces that you are giving here. This curly braces can be omitted in that case. But if you have multiple statements under if or else, that means more than one statements under if or else, then the bracket is mandatory. Say I have two printf statements under if, then I must put it within the brackets. Say I want to print you your teenage study well. Now we have two statements under the if block so the bracket is mandatory and we have only one statement under else, else block so we may omit the bracket that's not mandatory otherwise you can keep the bracket that's not going to make any harm. Now one more thing that I would like to tell you at this point of time you may notice that I have indented the content of the if block towards right. That makes sense actually. It makes the program more readable to the viewer. You can easily understand that which are the statements that's under the if block and which are the statements that comes under the else block. That makes our program more readable. So indentation is important when you are writing a bigger program then some good practices makes your program more comprehensive to understand, makes your program more readable for the other person and even for yourself it is going to be good in future to understand your own program if you write it 
in a comprehensive way by doing some good programming practices. That means write down the comments wherever you are using some complex logic and indent the programs, indent the blocks. If it comes under if or comes under else or under loop, then indent the block so that one can understand that these are the part of this particular if or else. You may notice that I have also indented the content of main. These are the content of content that comes under main, main function. So they are also indented. I have not written with the same margin. This is the margin for the main and I have maintained this margin as the statements which are coming under main. And again, you, you may notice that these are the margin. This is the margin that is for if and else. So this indentation is a good practice and writing the comments is also a good practice. So I will encourage you to write comments whenever you are using some complex logic and indent your program properly so that the program is more readable.